What a difference a year makes. Last August marked the beginning of the worst wildfire season in the state's history. By contrast, this summer, the monsoon has brought welcome moisture. Monsoon season presents its own challenges and mudslides, but one great benefit of repeated, soaking rains is a reduced chance of wildfires. Chris Sanders, a meteorologist in the National Weather Service's Grand Junction office, expects monsoonal moisture to continue. It looks as we progress into the week, storm chances will increase, and there will be rain and showers in your area, Sanders said. While there could be lighting from these systems that spark a fire, usually when you have multiple days of rain, the relative humidity increases, which lessens the opportunity for a conflagration, he explained. I can't say there won't be any wildfires, but the threat for a large, fast-spreading wildfire is low. In situations where humidity is higher and fires do manage to flare up, they often don't last, he added, sometimes, fires get rained out. Even though there may be no active wildfires in Colorado, there's a chance that a dangerous amount of smoke could nevertheless drift in from other states. Though a pink haze was visible in local skies at press time Friday, there are no air quality advisories right now, Sanders noted. But as high pressure moves back in, we could get more wildfire smoke. Indeed, just a week ago, there was a multi-day, statewide warning for hazardous smoke from multiple wildfires burning in California and the Pacific Northwest. Fire officials report there are currently 36 large, not yet controlled wildfires ablaze, the San Miguel County Sheriff's Office noted on its Facebook page. Smoke is dense throughout our county and health officials say even healthy people may want to limit time outdoors, those with respiratory issues or heart or lung disease should stay indoors and B have their routine and rescue medications. There's an additional reason to want to protect yourself and your family from wildfire smoke these days. Last month, a team of researchers reported in the Journal of Exposure Science and Environmental Epidemiology that exposure to wildfires may increase one's susceptibility to the novel coronavirus. Our results showed a substantial increase in the COVID-19 positivity rate in Reno during a time when we were affected by heavy wildfire smoke from California wildfires, the study's co-led author, Daniel Kaiser, MS, said. Reno was an ideal locale for such a study, given that it is located in an intermountain valley where particulate matter from wildfire smoke and other airborne pollutants tends to concentrate. Wildfire smoke can irritate your lungs, cause inflammation, affect your immune system, and make you more prone to lung infections, including SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID, the CDC has warned. If you must be outdoors, when air quality warnings are in place, experts advise wearing an N95 or KN95 mask, cloth face coverings are insufficient to filter the tiny, dangerous particles in wildfire smoke. A better idea is to stay inside, preferably with an air purifier that includes a HEPA filter. Such a filter offers protection from not only wildfire smoke and airborne allergens like pollen, but also the coronavirus. The website wirecutter.com reviews HEPA filters, the Environmental Protection Agency offers a free downloadable PDF primer, guide to air cleaners in the home, and updated smoke reports are available via links posted by the San Miguel County's Sheriff's Office to its Facebook page on August 7. University of Colorado Assistant Professor of Geography Colleen Reed was one of the first U.S. researcher to study the health impacts of wildfire smoke back in 2008, according to CU's website. One of the first to research the impacts of wildfire smoke. An interviewer recently asked Reed, should you exercise outdoors when it's smoky? That's a challenging question, Reed replied. We know from studies of cyclists that when the air pollution levels are not too high, the benefits of exercise outweigh the risk of air pollution exposure. But when the air quality gets really bad, it is challenging. Reed recommends following the recommending the guidelines of the air quality index, which advises that you curb outdoor exercise when levels exceed an Aki level of 150. The levels are lower, 100 on the Aki, for those with pre-existing respiratory disease, Reed added. And certainly, if the concentrations are so high you can't see to the end of your street, that might be a time to curb your outdoor exercise.